Good morning, it's Alexor again. So let's talk a little bit about the gear, the items in Last Epoch, which is one of the main things, obviously, in this game that really make a build come to life late game. It's really done mostly by the items. And there's a lot of great things we need to talk about today. So there's there's three main things we consider as items. And this is sort of here, your, your main items in this area, right? But the classic thing you have is your body armor, your helmet, your weapons, left and right. Two handles, uh, rings, gloves, boots, and a relic that is different for Last Epoch. Then we have idols. There's these things over here. These are similar to charms in Diablo 2 if you played that. Um, we're going to go over this later. It's a little bit different. And then we have blessings, which are these, which you can put on your Epoch. You can empower your Epoch with these things. And these are, let me go over this later, what they actually do. I mean, this is this. Let's talk about the main gear. This is all very simple. You know how this works. The only difference really is that the offhand over here, this thing, is the only one that can have different things. For example, if we go to our stash and the offhand, like this is a two hander, if we remove that, I can also put in, where is the offhand? Over here, like this, right? This sort of offhand catalyst. But. I cannot put this in here if I will a two-hander, obviously, this doesn't work, then it moves it out of it. But also, this can have a shield, right? If I go to shields, like this, for example, not with a two-hander, obviously, I would need a one-hander. Now I can wield a shield and a... This is a one-handing scepter, so you can also see this, now she has both, right? So this is different, this thing can have multiple things, it can have a shield, a... Offhand Catalyst, or it can also have another weapon, another one-hander, because some classes have the ability to dual wield, so you can have two swords in both hands. That's pretty much it about this thing. Then we have the Relic down here, that is a unique thing to last Epoch. It's just an additional item slot that has cool extra effects, usually around some sort of addition to the build in a sense it's not just damage or defense it has interesting things like for example this one has damage reflected chance to bleed on hit and increase bleed duration so this is a damage over time ailment that has this thing on it that the had the relic has so there are a lot of these things and but this is everything else is pretty much the same thing weapons usually have all the offense um all the offense stats the the, um, what's it called? A belt. Damn, I was blanking on the belt here. A belt or a ring usually have some sort of just straight stats or resistances for defense, right? As much as just health, for example. Uh, you can't put damage on it. I think you can put damage over time on it, but not straight damage. This is mostly for the weapons. Helmets usually also have things like intelligence or resistances or strength. And the boots usually have movement speed on it. And other, other fancy things. This is also a special one. We're going to talk about this later. The experimental ones. So let's talk about the rarities. These are very simple. There are six of them. Technically, it's seven. So, and this comes down to the affixes. All right. Actually, let's, let's cover the affixes first. That makes more sense. Yeah. Affixes are what you see these lines on that item. For example, there it says 90% increased spell lightning damage. That is an affix on this very item. An affix means this is an additional stat that item has. Now this is unique, so it's special anyway. So if we go to a normal one, they always have four, right? Four is the maximum affix on a regular item. This one or any item really also has an implicit, you see this, Right uh, below the Acolyte Relic, uh, it says Rejuvenating Defiled Bones of Purity. That's the headline. Then Acolyte Relic. And below that, it says it has also 16% increased spell damage. That is the implicit of an item. Each item, as you can tell, has an implicit. This and sometimes more. This has armor and movement speed and effect of haste. This has 10 mana. This has fire resistance and fire damage. So the implicit depends on what type of item that is. For example, this, wait, um, yeah, um, the, okay, actually, I show you guys this on the, 
on here that's easier. If we go to the, the belt, for example, and we go only for the basic ones, there are different types of belts, right? For example, the chain belt, the nomad belt, the plated belt, and they always have the same kind of stat implicit, right? For example, the plated bait always gives extra armor and potion slots. The noble sash always gives mana and potion slots. The chain belt always gives wall DK threshold and potion slots, okay? So, this can be interesting later. In the, in the beginning, it's not that relevant because you just you just look at it. Okay, it says it has movement speed and potion slots. Okay, great, I need this or I don't. But later, you can really farm for these specifically, especially if you want to make builds, for example, on last epoch tools yourself. Then this becomes interesting. So these are the implicits. You can also reroll them later when we make a video about crafting. It's not important right now, but you can change the values of this. Although it's random, but you can change them. Okay. So these affixes also describe, like these four things, describe the rarity of an item. This is what I did here. You have the common ones. These are the white ones. That means the item does not have any affixes on them. So you, this would just have an implicit, like the armor, mana, and increased mana, and nothing below that. Then it is white. Okay, that's the white thing. That's a common. They drop very often, and late game you don't give a shit about them. Then you have the magic ones that are blue ones. They have one to two. So you would have increased cast speed on that. Then it would be a magic one, would be blue. You have increased cast speed and intelligence. It's still magic, it's blue. The next thing is rare, yellow. That now has three to four affixes. So this one could be an, a rare. It's only exalted for a specific reason. I'll give you this later. But if it has four affixes on it, it is a rare one. So rare ones really carry you through the sort of mid game in last epoch. Um, these are the ones you find very often and they sometimes are very good, right? The next step is orange. These are the uniques. And they are different. They have completely different, they, ha they have no restriction on how many words can, or how many affixes can be on the unique, right? This has five, for example. This also has five, five. This one has a lot, as you can tell. It's, it's red, I'm gonna tell you in a second why it's red. It has seven. Uh, this also has six. And it still has the implicits, right? Every unique still has an implicit and it still only goes in a certain slot, but it has a lot of it can have a lot of affixes or not it doesn't matter it's just there's no limitation and they can change an entire play style of a character for example this one here it's just uh red a legendary because i crafted it but it would be unique for example this gives even plus extra to my spells so if i go to my spells now if i put it in uh, shit, we gotta remove this and this and then we put in our two-hander now I go to my spells. See, now I can put plus two into these spells. So I can put extra points into the spells just because of the item. Right? Also, when you directly cast Soul Feast, you curse yourself and up to one nearby enemy put 10 intelligence per torment. So now the effect of your spell of your spell is changed entirely. Also, 16% chance to cast Scaphonic Fisher. So if you're just uh, casting something with this item equipped. You have a chance to cast another spell. Some items completely change how the skill works entirely. For example, for detonating marksmen, they have a dagger, which turns the detonating arrow, which is an arrow, into a melee attack, which is completely crazy, right? So they can, the uniques can completely change how your character works. And they are really what sort of also makes this game. Next up is the set items. These are green. Set are special in the sense that they they are a little bit like unique. They can have uh, unlimited affixes on them, like five in this case. But also, if you have multiple items of the same set, then you get an extra bonus. It says it down here, for example, at the, the two that is grayed out. If you have, for example, two of these, then you get 15% increased melee cold damage per 10 health region. Or oh, there's also one that has three. This one, for example. So you gotta have all three items of this set equipped. Then you gain that bonus. 
as it stands right now, most of the items are pretty bad. Okay. <laughs> we, we just got to say it how it is. Most of them are pretty bad. Uh, but they said they will rework them. So going forward, you, you should collect them going forward. They might become useful. Now, the last thing is the legendaries. These are the red ones. Oh, never mind. I forgot about the exalts. Nope. Purple. All these, you see them here. All the purple ones like this. And to understand this, we got to look into the forge for a second. Because each affix on an item has a tier, a level. For example, if we throw in this belt into our forge, okay? In the forge, you can see the level of these affixes. For example, this has potion health converted to what? Tier 4. There are seven tiers, okay? One is the lowest. That means it does the least. So this would be at... I don't know, 5% potion health converted to ward. It's now a tier 4, so it does 25% of potion health converted to ward. 5 is the highest for the regular affixes. So I can increase this once more. For example, now it's tier 5 and it is red because this is now maxed. It says it down here, you can't see this, hold up. It says down here, affix is maxed, so you can't forge it anymore. Right? It doesn't work. It is now 34% of potion health converted. So you see, the higher the tier, the higher the numbers, the better the effect of that one affix is, okay? The poison damage, for example, also is tier 4, you can see that. So that's 34%, we can also increase that. And now it is 56%. So this is how you have your affix tiers. The affixes you can put on this depend on if it's a prefix, as over here, or a suffix. Very simple, the prefixes are the left ones and the suffixes are the right ones. If you look at our crafting materials over here, this is all the ones I have. Again, we go into the forge later how to actually craft items. But you, the suffixes are usually defensive. You can see that. Dodge rating and poison resistance. And the prefixes are offense. Damage over time, spell damage. Okay? So, for example, if you find an item that has these two already with damage over time and spell damage and you can't put what what would we have for example wait crafting materials we have five elemental damage for example you now can't put elemental damage into this because these two affixes are full even if it's free here right if you don't have an affix here for example the poison resistance is gone and you just have a, a, a free affix slot to put something in you cannot put the fire damage in that Offense and damage has to go on the left. Same with intelligence and all these sort of base stats because damage scales with those. Defenses only go on the right. Offense only on the left. And this is would be still a rare item, a yellow one, if I would do this. The reason it is purple is because it has exalted affixes on it, meaning they go higher than tier 5. Over here, right? You see this? Tier 6 and Tier 7, these are purple. This is the dodge rating and the physical resistance. So these go even higher than the regular ones. And these are the ones you want to look for later, because they are super powerful. Everything that is purple is super high. Like 22 intelligence, you can't go there with a regular rare item. You would be at like, I think, 15 intelligence mostly. Um, with the T7, Tier 7 intelligence on this, it's way higher. Okay, that's what the tiers do. Tier 7 is the highest. Tier 6 also counts as exalted. Tier 7 is what you're looking for. That's the highest you can get on a specific item with its affix. As you can tell, some items can also have two affixes, uh, two, two exalted affixes on them. But this is very rare. You find them very late. And this is, of course, what you're looking for. I think 2 is the max, though. You can't have more than 2 on it. So these are the, legend, uh, the exalted items. These here, I have a bunch of them. Also here, the physical damage leashes health is the exalted one. Or the crit, 174% increased crit. The exalts you also need for your legendaries. Because a legendary like this one, for example, these are the red affixes you see on there. The regular exemptionist is unique, right? It's orange. It just has 20% of current health, missing health gain this ward. Attack speed, immunity to bleed. That's the four affixes it has. Now, mine has mana and increased health on it. How did I do that? This is done by legendary crafting. And you can only do this in the Temporal Sanctum dungeon. Okay, which is in the Ruined Era. 
<laughs> this is the only place where you can craft these legendaries. Ruined coast, and down here there's a Temporal Sanctum dungeon. This is a dungeon you have to play through. You have to kill the boss, and after you kill the boss, Chronomancer Jura, she's called, after that, you get to a crafting mechanism. This is your late game crafting. And there you can put an exalt with four affixes. It has to have four affixes on it, because it can also have less. It has to have four affixes on it. You can put that on a unique that has legendary potential. You see this? For example, this one has it. It says in the implicit, one legendary potential. This can go from one to four. An item can have one, and like only unique items, right? Only unique items can have this. You can have one legendary potential or four. The higher the legendary potential, the more unlikely you are to get this item or to find it in the first place. So four LP is very, very rare on most items. And if you look at the um, chances to roll that, it's almost impossible for most people to roll a four LP item. I have maybe in this stash, I think I have three items that have three LP. I do not have a single one that has four on them. And the reason is simple. Because I can now merge this shield with another exalted shield, if I had that. So that's a, a bad... Let's, let's go with this. This, is, this has two LP on it, because I don't have exalted shields. I don't care about shields. Um, this offhand catalyst, it has two legendary potential. Two, okay? So I can now take another exalted offhand catalyst. For example, this one. Put it next to it. And then I can craft it, meaning... This unique will get one of these four, uh, two of these four affixes on this exalted one as well. So, for example, what I did here was I had the Exanginus and I had another body armor. It has to be the same type, okay? It has to be the same type body armor. You can't just throw any other thing on it. That had increased health and mana and two other affixes on it. And then I ran the dungeon. I crafted this and I got the health and the mana on the Exanctionist. Same thing I did here. This was actually a bad roll. I didn't want to slow on hit, but this is what I got. This had one legendary potential on it. So I threw another two-handed staff, exalted on it. I wanted the cast speed. I didn't get it because it's random. It was a one in four chance because I had one legendary potential. So the exalted has four affixes. So it's a one in four chance to get the, the one you want. The higher your LP, the more is on it. Simple. For example, this one has two LP, so two of these would be on it. So your chances to get the one you want on it are better. This is also why the legendary potential is so rare to get. Because if you have an item with four LP on it, you get all the four affixes on this exalted one onto your unique. And as soon as you do this, it be automatically becomes a legendary, a red one. Because you crafted this yourself. Again, if you only have one LP or even two, um, the rolls are, it's depending a lot on luck for you. And sometimes you're very unlucky like I am and you brick items. For example, this on the wild resistance is kind of useless for me. And I even have, I think it is in the legendaries. No, in the twin items. I have this one. Yeah, the fire starter torch, this had one LP on it. I tried to get, this is a fire item, right? So I tried to get more fire damage on it. I got cold penetration. So this item now sucks. I mean, you still have the base item, uh, the base item affixes. They don't change, right? They don't change at all. But the one I have on it is now just kind of shitty. So that's how you craft legendary items. The other way to get legendaries is with the Weaver's Will. You see this? Some of these have in the implicit, you see it says Weaver's Will. That is a very special one. And there are only a few of these exist, I think five? Five items like that, like the Swaddling of the Erase, there's also the Font of the Erase, which is a ring. Um, boots, yeah, these ones. You see, it's legendary, because what this does, the Weaver's Will, when you wear this and you kill enemies, basically you gain XP, then the Weaver's Will will add affixes to this unique randomly. And you, you don't know what it will add, you don't know how many it will add. And it will keep improving them 13 times in this case. The Weaver's Will goes from, I believe, 10 to 20, I think is the highest, I'm not sure. So this will randomly add 
things onto your gloves. For example, this with this one I did it. I was just wearing these and killing enemies and then it added movement speed, dexterity, dodge rating and armor to it. So it's now a legendary because it has is a unique with extra affixes on it. Very simple. These are okay. If you're lucky and you get something good out of it, that's great. Um, so far, they haven't really worked well for me. Maybe your luck is better with them. They have plus three to all attributes, sometimes even plus five uh, on, the, on the glove. So that's nice. There's also the shield, which does the same thing. Maybe your luck is better than mine. Yeah, that's just uh, for me. There is one more unique special item that can become a legendary, and that is this one, the Merophage. Mer Merophage, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Uh, and it says it, actually, I have to put it over here so you can see it. If you look at the white ones, these are your regular affixes, plus one all skills, that's cool, leech rate, cool, cool, cool. But down there it says, when you shatter a two-handed sword while you have Merophage equipped, it absorbs the shards you would gain using them to gain legendary affixes or replace its existing ones. This needs a little bit of knowledge about the forge, which we will get into in the next video. But just on a base level, you can destroy items. For example, I could shatter this item and gain the affix shards it has. So I would gain mana shards, cold resistance shard, necrotic resistance shard, and the physical damage leech as health shard. These are these ones, which I have 14,000 of. And then you can put these when you forge on your items yourself or increase them. Right, that's how this works. So while you wear this and you are in the forge and you destroy a two-handed sword, this one will get the affixes from it and thus become a legendary. This is the third way for this one item to become a legendary. So in this case, I destroyed a another two-handed sword that had melee attack speed, melee cold damage, area for melee area skills and melee damage and spell damage on it. And then, thus the Merophage gained it. I don't see this in many builds, so it doesn't seem to be that good. But this is how you can create another legendary with, with that thing. Then we have one more thing, and that's the experimental items. These are special because there's only three. You can have experimental boots, you can have experimental belts, and experimental uh, gloves. That's the only three things. And you only get these from the exiled mages. When you see these rune prisons, when you're running around, especially in the, uh, in the monoliths later, and you kill that exiled mage within that, he drops an experimental item. And they are special because they have special things only these have, which are the experimental thingies. For example, this is the sort of light purple bluish thing. For example, this has 26 watt gained when you use the traversal skill. Seven won't gain per 10 missing mana when you use a traversal skill. Okay, cool. There is seconds of haste after you use a blink. Increase the effect of haste on you. There's also minion damage. Three minions teleported around you after you use a traversal skill. So this is also great for a necromancer, for example. I've been using this one a lot. The belts also have ward decay threshold and ward gained on potion use per intelligence. So there are some fancy things these have. Okay, the volatile, this also is interesting. Volatile zombies summit on potion use. So if you eat a potion, you cast more zombies. This is good for the rare flood, for example. So some of them are very useful. They always have four affixes, I believe. And there's always one of the affixes is this experimental one. Now this one I have here is super special because, especially later, you can also drop these with exalted affixes on them. In this case, I even have two of them on it. Two exalted affixes, an experimental affix, and just one regular. That is kind of crazy. So these are a little bit of a, of a niche thing. You can only get them from the exalted mages, but they are they have some, some special stuff. There is also a rabbit hole you can do with this, with the glyphs of despair. I don't want to go into detail with this now. This is not relevant. We, we go into this later, what to do with these and what they actually do. Just bear in mind. With this, for example, you can also craft this on a unique. Because it's an exalted item. You need to have an exalted item to craft into a legendary, right? But it has this thing on it. So if I had boots with legendary potential on them, 
I can get the seconds of haste if used traversal skill, so the experimental ethics. I can get this on my legendary. Okay, this is it about the regular items. Now let's talk a little bit about idols. Idols are these things over here, and these are unlocked in the campaign. When you start, you only have, I think, well, all of them are locked. And the first one, you get these three slots, then you get more slots. So you have to unlock this by playing through the campaign. I have a video on how to get through the campaign fastest with your alternative characters and still get all the bonuses. So check that out. The idols work the same than a regular item, except they only have two affixes and they can only have two. They always have two. You have your, like these ones are the general ones every class can run and you have class specific idols like this one. It says at above, Acolyte Ornate Idol. These don't have implicits, they only have affixes on them, right? And these are roles, they can have a lot of them actually. A lot of different ones. And this is actually an Acolyte Idol. This one is a regular one as well as this. And we also have a bunch of, for example, these are all the mage idols. Then we have, this is Rogue, this is Primalist. This is Sentinel. So they have their own, each class has their own idols they can use. Okay. They usually give you smaller buffs, like for example, percentage increased health, elemental resistance, and especially the regular ones, water retention, mana health. They also give you resistances. They don't have any offense, like the regular ones, the, the general ones. They don't have any offense effects. This is done in the class idols. For example, this has increased cast speed while cursed and resistance. Cool. Health, poison chance on spell hit, chance to chill with necrotic skills. So these are very special in what they do. Okay, this has health gain when stunned, uh, chance to blind with spells, fire penetration with melee attacks. So these are very special on your build, and the idols can have a huge impact on your build, right? So you really want to look into uh, how they work. If you play through the campaign, you also definitely want to pick up all of them. Look at this. I have I have a ton of idols. You want to pick them all up because it depends a lot on what you need for your build. You just want to have them all flying around. The sizes are very different. As you can tell, you have the wide ones, you have the tall ones, and you have these 2x2 two two ones. So you have to play around with the sizes a little bit. Now, I can put this in here if, if I remove this, so I have to remove more of them. So this plays around a little in, in how, you, how you actually put them all in there, right? Or you set this all up. Idols are very different in their regard. They can literally have a lot of affixes on them on all sorts of ranges. So you really want to pick up all of them and look into what they actually do when you put them in there. One last thing, there is also the sealed affixes. That's a, also an interesting, even another thing. You can seal an affix on an experimental boot glove or belt, meaning if you have this rune, we're going to do this in the Forging in more detail, rune of research, you can seal one of these affixes, moving it out of that slot into an extra slot and freeing up another slot. That would say, if you do this, then for example, if it is it's, it's random which one it chooses, so let's say this uses necrotic resistance, then it pulls that down here, so it's now on the fifth spot, and this one becomes free again. So now you have five affixes on this one you can use, and another free one to put something in there. So the experimental ones can have five. Okay, that's the only ones that can actually have that. But you have to have the rune of research to do this. Now about the blessings. The blessings are interesting. You only get these in the monoliths of fate at the end game. This is here, right? The end of time, the monoliths of fate. If you play through these, and you can also see them here. If you kill the boss in each monolith, right? They give you a blessing after killing them. And you can see this here. For example, this is the Grand Arrogance of Argentus. Argentus. He gives me a blessing that has a 49% increased helmet drop rate. These blessings only apply to this character, but they apply everywhere and they are set. It doesn't matter what, how, what items you run, what idols you have, the blessings will stay. Okay, you are empowering your epoch, basically. For example, here I have the Grace of Water, 56% ward gained on potion use. They have a lot of stuff in these. Some of them, for example, this one just gives you straight more experience when you play, when you kill enemies, you get more XP. That's great. Then some give you better affix shard drop rates, like I think this one, better helmet drop rates. Some even have a skill shard drop rate, cold resistance, applying frailty on hit, 
prefix shard drop rate, dodge rating, yeah, the wall threshold, we talked about two-handed staff drop rate. So that's a lot of shit with these. And they also depend on if you play empowered monoliths or unempowered monoliths. Right? This is when you go, for example, here I did it, I believe. And um, when you play through this whole thing once, you get to this place here in the middle. When you killed all the bosses once for the first time, then you can go here and empower your monoliths. So they are now corruption level 100. So they are way stronger. And then you can go here and you can choose the empowered monolith to play in the entire monolith again on higher corruption, meaning on higher difficulty. The, the enemies are stronger, they have more health, they deal more damage, and the bosses also are stronger. So you got to have a good build that also does some damage. Now if you go here, you can see I can now choose between normal, that's area level 62, or empowered, which is 100. And you can even increase the corruption further with that, but that doesn't do anything about your blessings. And they are, there are two stages for this. The normal ones and the empowered blessings. And the empowered blessings are just stronger. For example, this is a normal one still, 5%. The empowered one, I think, gives you 30% more XP. They, they also have rolls, so there is a range. But this is what the blessings also do. Once you've killed a boss one time, you can also kill him again. Like You can run through the whole monolith of fate if you don't like what you have here. Kill him again and get another blessing. But again, the blessing is only for this one character in this... Yeah, only for this, this character you have there. But it does apply everywhere. In the campaign, in the monoliths, in the dungeons. It's just set for this character unless you kill the boss again and reroll it and do something else with it. So that's very, very different in, in what it does. You cannot craft anything about these. They are set as they are. You have to kill the boss again and hope for a better roll on them. You don't here you also see which ones you already have um, discovered or not. But again, they can be changed anytime you just have to kill, kill the boss again. Okay, that's it about the blessings. Then we have the inventory, the items, and the appearance really is just cosmetics. That's very simple. I don't even have to go through this. Um, you can choose your, your, your back thingy. For example, here now I have this. That's just cosmetics that does nothing to the game. You can buy these. They will also add uh, equi skill ones. So if you have a skill that will look different in the future, this will all be added. That's just cosmetics and purely for the visuals. That does nothing to the game play in and of itself. Okay. And you can go into the shop here and also buy some of these with... These are with real money. That's the only thing where you spend real money on them. Um... To gain something out of the game. Everything else is done with in-game money. Alright, that was it for the items or the, the whole gear. No, I forgot something. There's one more key thing I forgot to mention and that is smart loot. The game has smart loot, meaning the loot that drops from the enemies is heavily, heavily, heavily biased towards the character and the mastery you're playing. Or like the class, I should say. So when you play Acolyte, like I do over here, and body armor drops, also exalted, you are much more likely to get a Acolyte body armor than a Sentinel. Sometimes the Sentinel still drops, so it's not that there is no chance, but you are much more likely, while you play a character, to get items for this character. Okay, That's great, because then you actually get your stuff easier and you're not so heavily dependent on luck. This does not apply to uniques or set items. Okay? That means, this is also great, like, some of them are specifically better for the Acolyte. For example, this one, Necrotic Resistance and Ward per Second. This is definitely a uh, Acolyte unique helmet. You don't have any use for that with another class. But if you have an OP build like this one, right? The Warlock. Um, and you can farm easily higher corruption with this, where you get better item drops, better unique drops. You can still find uniques for your other classes. You can even run your Prophecies. And the prophecies you have towards another class you're not even playing right now, it doesn't matter. The uniques are not biased with the loot with the smart loot filter, only regular items up to exalts. Okay? But that's very important to know. So if you play a character and you realize, okay, I'm only dropping acolyte relics and um, acolyte body armors, why is that happening? I need something for my sentinel. Then you need to play the sentinel. Then these will drop more often. Okay? 
Again, except for unique and set items like this one. All right, that was it for the items and the whole gear. I hope this helped to get the base understanding. Again, next video will be about crafting. This is an important one. Crafting is very, very important in this game. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments if you have any more questions about items in general, how they work in Last Epoch. Um, crafting. We will also do a video on crafting legendaries. This will be an entire video on its own, how to do this in the dungeon. And yeah, that's it. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you in the next video, my friends.